Hi, my name is Mike, and I normally record videos on car repair and computer upgrades and repair, but in this video I wanted to record something a little bit different. I'm currently in the process of installing OSB plywood in my home garage workshop. This is a 24 by 32 structure with 10 foot ceilings. When we bought our house two years ago in May of 2020, this space was unfinished and you can see the back walls looked more like they do over there where there's just exposed studs and insulation and we've slowly been fixing this space up we added a garage door opener and as you can see I'm now putting up the plywood to finish it out I wanted to share a few tips I thought this might be helpful I watched some other videos on YouTube of other people installing plywood in their garages and I noticed that you know mine looked a little bit different than what I saw in most of the other videos so I just wanted to show some of the techniques that I'm using and some of the tools that I'm using in hopes that this might be helpful to anyone else looking to take on this type of project. So to start, I'm using 4x10 7 16ths OSB wood. I got this at my local lumber yard for around $38 per sheet. I carried the first five sheets home in my pickup truck and carrying 10 foot wood in a truck with a six foot bed is kind of tough so I had a delivery of the remaining 20 sheets and you can see there that's what I have left. It's hard to believe that you know a little stack of plywood these days is almost a thousand dollars but such as pricing. I remember back when it was you know five dollars a sheet but then coronavirus hit and it went up to ninety dollars a sheet and now it's back down to uh, like I said around thirty eight dollars a sheet. I don't really have a timeline on this. I've just been kind of working on this. You know, I put up a board a night typically when I get home from work and just making a little progress as I go. I think it's going to be a really big improvement versus the exposed insulation like that, which was just really messy and had a lot of full of spiders and dust and everything. This wall over here that I already finished was the worst wall, both in terms of how much dust and crud it accumulated and also the number of things that I had to cut around. The electrical panel that you can see over there was mounted too far back. I had to pull that forward and reframe around it so that I could have it flush with the wall. And then just cutting around things like the windows and the electrical outlets has been pretty challenging. But as you can see, it's getting there. I'm pretty pleased with the look and I'm really excited to hopefully have, uh, you know, sometime in the next month or so have this project finished up. So... One thing that you might have seen when I pan the camera around to the back of the room is that most garages, they have a vertical, you know, the studs in the wall are going vertically. In mine, they're going, as you can see, they're going horizontally. I don't know why they did this. I, I think they cut corners or, <laughs> you know, used whatever wood they had available. Maybe they didn't want to get 10-foot studs. I don't know what the deal was, but... A lot of the videos, like I mentioned, you know, the, the studs typically go vertically in the wall and it makes it pretty easy to line it up and, you know, cut your wood. So it's been a little bit more challenging for me. That bottom board down there didn't exist on any of these other spaces. And also there's not been necessarily a good space to screw it to up at the top. So I've been kind of just taking some scrap wood and as I go along and, you know, making framing pieces where I needed to. And we'll just kind of pan it along the wall here so you can see. That electrical wire, I don't know why that wasn't run properly. I had to, it was on the bottom of that 2x6 or 2x8, and I had to move it up to the side. That's for the, some of the lights on the exterior of the garage. That heater, super, super, super heavy. A lot of cursing involved in getting that thing down and up. And, you know, just, I wish they had done this properly when they built the garage, but I'm excited to be doing it correctly now. Yeah, let's look at the tools a little bit. I've got a lot of different things here, and we'll just kind of go over each one. You know, uh, electrical tester because I am, you know, moving the sockets a little bit. Some heavy uh, lineman pliers. There was some staples and stuff I had to pull out to make that easier. A sharpie, uh, level, big level, tape measure hammer, staple gun. I'm using these Deckmate screws, and these are a star drive screw, like a Torx bit screw. And I feel like these go in a lot easier than a standard Phillips screw. I don't want to nail this together in case I do ever need to take the panels off the wall. Screws will make this a lot easier to remove things if I need to. So the Deckmate screws, two and a half inch in a couple places, two inch in other places. So one place I can show you where I used a two and a half inch is right up there. I had to come in through that, uh, through that board to put some backer behind that so that the 
top of the board would sit flush where I wanted it. So there's, a, there's another board behind the top of this. I'm not going all the way to the floor. I've always heard that OSB, you don't want to rest it all the way flush on the floor in case water comes in. So just using some old scrap wood and flooring boards. When I put this in, I'll put a piece of old flooring in and then I'll set my OSB up on the wall and screw it into place. Tools. Uh, so we looked at the screws, basic hand tools, uh, you know, drill, uh, circular saw, jigsaw for cutting out the electrical boxes. I recommend uh, some clamps, hold things in place while you're cutting. I've been kind of just using other boards, uh, you know, 2x10, 2x4, 10-foot boards to just help me line up my cuts. Some of these spacers because I did need to pull the outlets forward just a little bit. Oversized wall plates. I picked up these. These you can should be able to get at your local hardware store. This is a three-quarter inch oversized jumbo wall plate. Just helps you if you've messed up your cutting at all. And I'll show some photos at the end of this video of different steps along the process of this project. Jigsaw, pry bar, help you line things up a little bit. I'm I would stick this underneath and just help me level the boards before screwing them into place sometimes you need to do that uh, a little bit of caulk you can see i've been caulking in there behind in a few places where i needed it some electrical boxes so these i've been using as templates so if i needed to cut for example i'm going to need to cut a hole for this electrical box so rather than just trying to eyeball it i'll use this i'll i'll measure the placement set this on my board and cut around to use it as a template so I'm not just trying to eyeball the size of my electrical box holes some roller square drill bits battery charger your caulk gun like I mentioned caulk in a few spots along the floor kind of a long project but I'm really excited to be doing it I'm really glad I watched a few other videos on YouTube first that recommended using the 4x10 wood and also that recommended the star drive screws. I'll include links to a few other videos in the description, videos that helped me out a lot and hopefully will help you should you decide to do this project yourself.
just picking my video back up again, I hope the previous slideshow was helpful to you. It is now December of 2022, and I've just recently finished my project here. It took a little longer than I anticipated. I hurt my foot and had to have surgery, and then I came down with COVID, which was kind of a bummer. But I was finally able to get all the wood up in the garage, and here's a little dog playing with his ball. He loves to come out here when it's too cold outside. You see he's got his Christmas sweater on. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, everyone. So this is it. I'm really pleased with the results. As I mentioned in my earlier video clip, I recommend the star drive screws, Deckmate. They come in a few different colors. You should be able to pick these up at your local hardware store. And you can see here how nicely they sink into the wood and they don't stick out at all. They also don't strip at all like Phillips or flathead screws do. You may want to pick up a few additional bits. And I've added a few other things around the garage as I was working here, like this light strip, which is really nice for working on projects. You know, other projects include now, you know, now that I finished the wood, I want to try to do something about the flooring, either get an epoxy coating or maybe get those PVC squares that you see in a lot of garage pictures. You know, add some more insulation, update my toolboxes. There's always more work to be done when you own a home. There's no, a never-ending list of projects. I also recommend, as I mentioned before, if you have a 10-foot ceilings, as I did here, use the 4x10 wood, which will save you from having a lot of scrap. If you have a shorter garage, you can use the 4x8s. I really like the OSB as opposed to the drywall because this allowed me to hang tools and you can see I'm starting to hang some art, some chairs. You can hang stuff just about anywhere. The wood was around $40 a sheet when I bought it. I believe that price will have gone down now, you know, just with the economy and the time of year. Let me know in the comments what you pay if you decide to do this project. What's the price of wood near you? I'd be curious to know. I was following it pretty closely for a couple of years, so it's something that's kind of interesting to me now. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe to my channel. I typically do car repair, truck repair videos, as well as computer repair, but I hope to do more type of home improvement videos in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the comments as well. Thank you, have a great day, and stay safe out there. He loves to come out here and play when there's snow on the ground. Having a garage is great. All right, boy.